Good morning. Today, the church remembers Saint Henry, who lived in the 11th century. He was a German king. He and his wife are both saints, and um, they were known for their care for the poor. Our entrance antiphon. In your strength, O Lord, the just one rejoices. How greatly your salvation makes him glad. You have granted him his soul's desire. We pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. As we begin this day, we acknowledge any faults, any failures, and we ask the good Lord for the graces we'll need this day, for our families, for our world, especially those suffering. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, whose abundant grace prepared St. Henry to be raised by you in a wonderful way, from the cares of earthly rule to heavenly realms, grant, we pray, through his intercession, that amid the uncertainties of this world, we may hasten towards you with minds made pure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. Judah approached Joseph and said, I beg you, my Lord, let your servant speak earnestly to my Lord, and do not become angry with your servant, for you are the equal of Peru. My Lord asked your servants, Have you a father or another brother? So we said to my Lord, We have an aged father and a young brother, the child of his old age. This one false brother is dead. And since he is the only one by that mother who is left, his father dots on him. Then you told your servants, Bring him down to me that my eyes may look on him. Unless your youngest brother comes back with you, you shall not come into my presence again. When we returned to your servant, our father, we reported to him the words of my Lord. Later, our father told us to come back and buy some food for the family. So we reminded him, we cannot go down there only if our youngest brother is with us can we go, for we may not see the man if our youngest brother is not with us. Then your servant, our father, said to us, As you know, my wife bore me two sons. One of them, however, disappeared, and I have to conclude that he must have been torn to pieces by wild beasts. I have not seen him since. If you now take this one away from me too, and some disaster befalls him, you will send my white head down to the netherworld in grief. Joseph could no longer control himself in the presence of all his attendants, so he cried out, Have everyone withdraw from me. 
There's no one else was about when he made himself known to his brothers. But his sounds were so loud that the Egyptians heard him, and so the news reached Pharaoh's palace. I am Joseph, he said to his brothers. Is my father still in good health? But his brothers could give him no answer, so dumbfounded were they at, at, at him. Come closer to me, he told his brothers. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you once sold into Egypt. But now do not be distressed, and do not reproach yourselves for having sold me here. It was really for the sake of saving lives that God sent me here ahead of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. When the Lord called down a famine on the land and ruined the crop that sustained them, he sent a man before them, Joseph sold us a slave. They had weighed him down with feathers, and he was bound with chains, till his prediction came to pass, and the word of the Lord proved him true. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people set him free, and he made him lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his apostles, As you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, drive out demons. Without cause you have received, without cause you are to give. Do not take gold or silver or copper for your belts, no sack for the journey or a second tunic or sandals or walking stick. The laborer deserves his keep. Whatever town or village you enter, look for a worthy person in it to stay there until you leave. As you enter a house, wish it peace. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. If not, if not, let your peace return to you. Whoever will not receive you or listen to your words, go outside that house or town and shake the dust from your feet. Amen, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. The Gospel of the Lord. How many times have we asked, why, Lord, why did this have to happen? I think Joseph must have asked God the same question hundreds of times when he was sold into slavery. Not only did he feel betrayed by his brothers, and he also then suffered separation then from his parents, his family. And the life of a slave must have been terribly harsh. In today's first reading, we have the opportunity to see why. We are given a rare view 
of why bad things happen sometimes to good people. The tears and pain that Joseph suffered all those years finally made sense to him as he was able to see life from God's perspective. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you once sold to Egypt, but now do not be distressed. It was really for the sake of saving lives that God sent me here ahead of you. Because he was able to interpret Pharaoh's dream of seven years of prosperity followed with seven years of famine, that Pharaoh appointed him to be then governor and appointed him to prepare for those lean times afterwards. But he wouldn't have been able to advise Pharaoh and save countless lives had he not been sold to a slave, as a slave in Egypt. We don't often understand how God works. All we can do is our best and be open to God's will. The saint that we remember today, Saint Henry, as I shared with you earlier, he was a German king who lived in the 10th century. Although he was engaged in battle and offered even military assistance to the Pope, but his ultimate goal was to bring about peace in Europe. He took his faith seriously, and as a king, he cared for the welfare of his people. Both King Henry and Joseph remind us that as we do our best and cooperate with God, God then is able to somehow use us to be a blessing to others. May these saintly men remind us that our loving God can bring good even out of something evil. Let us pray. Let us then pray for ourselves and all Christians that we may be God's instrument of peace and mercy to a hurting world. We pray to the Lord. For our leaders, that through the intercession of King Henry, they may be wise leaders who work for the well-being of their people. We pray to the Lord. For God's help to bring about healing and peace in, in war-torn areas such as Ukraine, Myanmar, Sudan, and Somalia, we pray to the Lord. For the nearly 50 million people worldwide forced into modern slavery, for their freedom and well-being, we pray to the Lord. For the sake that they may find comfort and healing from our Lord, we remember Ernesto Choi, Michael Connell, Charlie Cunningham, and all whom we have promised our prayers. We pray to the Lord. And this Mass is being offered for the repose of the souls of Father Philip Chen and Patrick Francis Cooney. So for them, for all who have died, and all who mourn the loss of a loved one, we pray to the Lord and for your intentions. For all of our intentions, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, into your hands we commend our cares, confident that you'll hear and will answer in a way that is best for us, through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray then, my sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Through the present oblation, O Lord, which we offer in commemoration of Blessed Henry, bestow on your faithful, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is really right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new, and offer us sure signs of your love, and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled, their great example lends us courage, their fervent prayer sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy there for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Salvatore, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember Father Philip Chan, 
Patrick Cunin, and all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. With one heart and one faith together we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
our communion antiphon. Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me, says the Lord. Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord, in commemoration of blessed Henry, sanctify our minds and hearts that we may merit to be made sharers in the divine nature. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Have a wonderful day, everyone.